Hi friends, it's Amanda and today I'm back with another brush pen review. This time we're going to focus on the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pens and I'm going to tell you why they are my favorite brush pens. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the Faber-Castell Pit artist pens, which is a mouthful, I know. They come in several different tips of pens, um, but this video is actually going to focus on the brush tip, which is the B on the pen. So if you are familiar with the Faber-Castells, you may notice that they might, they'll have a, either a letter or a number at the base, and this is um, the B, so that stands for brush. They also have them on the pen cap as well. Um, now there is a soft brush. Um, I am going to demonstrate that one. Um, and it says SB at the bottom or SB on the um, cap. So those are the two that we're going to be talking about in this video. So these are um, a little bit bigger. The nib is more of a medium sized nib. Let's see if I can focus on here. So it's more medium sized than. Um, like a Tombow, which is really, really large, or the Tombow Feud, which is really, really small. This one's kind of in the middle. So one of the main differences with these pens is that the ink in them is actually India ink. So it's not water-based ink, which means if you are wanting to use these pens to do, um, to, or to blend a couple of colors together, um, like I did in my Tombow blending video, it actually won't work. India ink is also very color fast, so the colors won't fade um, over time or fade in, in uh, direct light or anything like that. Also, um, they're great for going over, let's say you um, did kind of a watercolor piece or you did a painting piece or, or something and um, you wanted to write on top of it, the ink won't bleed into the other colors. So if you did like a, a watercolor background and then you wanted to letter over top of it, the India ink won't spread into the watercolor. The pros on these pens for me is that um, I really like the medium sized nib. Um, it's a great kind of in the middle. It's not really big like a Tombow, um, but it's also not really small, so I can do normal size work with it. Um, it's very flexible, so the tip is really flexible. It's really bouncy. Um, it bounces back fairly quickly, so it's easy to get really bouncy letters, bouncy work, but it's also easy to get really thick downstrokes and thin upstrokes because the nib does bounce back into place. Um, also, something that I've recently discovered is that the nib is reversible. So if you happen to have one of these and the tip has gotten frayed, you can actually take out the tip and turn it around. So this tip isn't actually frayed yet, but I'm going to show you how you can take it out. So I just use a pair of tweezers. You could use your fingers, but you'll get ink all over yourself. But you basically, you just grab hold and pull it out. And see the other side is another tip and then you just turn it around and it's like you have a brand new brush tin brush pen so that's something I just recently discovered apparently the eco line pens are like that as well but yeah neat little trick so another thing I really like about these pens is the color saturation so um, actually the black in this, I guess because it's India ink, I'm not 100% sure. I could be completely wrong about this. Um, I guess because it's India ink, maybe the ink is, uh, the colors are a little bit more um, saturated. So the black is actually the darkest, the richest black I've actually came across in a brush pen. So um, if you are wanting to do something all in black that you really want to stand out, um, I really do like these pens for that. Um, some of the cons are the, I mean, it's a felt tip pen, so it's gonna fray, especially if you use it on the wrong paper, it can fray really easily. Um, but you know, you've got two, so you can flip it around. That's, that's a plus side. Um, another con is that these are really expensive pe uh, pens compared to some of the others. So um, you're, you're talking probably about two to three dollars per pen. 
Um, they are hard to come by in a larger pack of colors. So they come in tons of colors. The only thing is you usually have to buy a really large pack of the pens to get um, a big selection of colors. And at two to three dollars a pen, that can really add up. So um, I will usually buy the four to six color packs. Um, they're usually in like a color story. So um, maybe in, there'll be some that are bold colors. Like if you can see these colors right here, they came in one pack. Um, I had a pack that was all pinks. Um, and I just buy them either as they're on sale at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, or if um, there's like a 50% off coupon at Michael's, I'll use that. Um, it just kind of depends, but uh, they are definitely more expensive than a lot of brush pens. Those are my two downsides. Um, they're expensive and the nib can fray a little easier. I'm going to show you actually the difference between the soft brush and the regular brush. So I'm just going to use this scrap piece of paper here. So again, um, SB and B, that's what we're going to I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So um, B is just the regular brush tip and SB is the soft. Okay, so show you the difference between the two tips. So this is the B. This is just the regular brush pen. Maybe zoom in just a little bit more. So you can see here how flexible it is. So like when you press down it bounces back real quick, which is 99% why I really like this pen. Um, so that's kind of the, the strokes you get with just the regular brush. Okay, and then the soft brush. It's a little bit longer, the tip is, and the um, regular brush is more of your traditional brush tip. So the soft tip is really flexible. And because of that, I find it hard to get a steady um, upstroke it doesn't bounce the tip doesn't bounce back quite as quickly as the regular brush tip um, and obviously you, you can get a more dramatic downstroke versus upstroke with it I do find that I have to go a lot slower with this so there's the difference between the soft brush tip and the regular brush tip so that's it for my Faber Castell Pit Artist brush pens. Uh, next week I will actually be um, talking about the Tombow dual brush tip pens. So these are the regular the, the regular Tombows that most people are used to. Um, the Tombows that I used in my blending video that I'll link to below. Um, they're probably the most common brush pen you'll run across. Um, they are a really large tip, but we'll get into all of that next time with my next video and um, to make sure that you don't miss it make sure you subscribe below and if you like this video share it with your friends leave me a comment um, just let me know that you've watched um, and I will see you next time